good on today is the day of salvation. Today it is the day that the Lord has made us some that the men in Islam, men in Hinduism, men in Catholicism, men in religion will hear the good news of the Savior Jesus. For well, many of you know him as a prophet, but I've not known him as Savior. And today we're here to speak about the saving grace of the Lord Jesus. Friends, instruct them today is a day of salvation and the essence of sounding the alarm, the essence of blowing the shofar is to remind you of what the Bible says in the book of Thessalonians. For the Lord himself, who was born in a manger, for the Lord himself, who was nailed to the cross, for the Lord himself, will descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the Bible says, by this trumpet, the dead in Christ will be raised. The question that I always ask myself, can dead Muslims be raised when the trumpet blows? Or dead Hindus be raised when the trumpet blows? Or dead Catholic be raised when the trumpet blows? My question is, will dead Rastafarians be raised when the trumpet blows? Friends, the Bible declares as well that those who are alive in Christ, it gives the person who will be raised and translated from the grave, and those who are alive in the bodies that will be translated, it says those in Christ. Today, people of Stratton, are you in Christ or are you in religion? For many of us have a religious membership and religious identity and forsake the one true God and his son Yeshua whom he has sent. Many of us place the emphasis of us going to heaven on our achievement, our benevolence and the deeds that we perform and the acts of religion and the observation of customs and traditions and prayers that we pray and who we pray to but friends except we repent will likewise perish except we turn away from our sins and pursue Jesus the Yeshua HaMashiach will likewise perish and today we sound the alarm the alarm of the coming King the alarm of the Messiah the alarm of the one who is resurrected prophet and resurrected redeemer resurrected king and resurrected lord and resurrected god the one that has the key of david in his hand we sound the alarm of his coming we do not sound the alarm of santa claus who gives good men good gifts and a christmas gift but we sound the alarm of the messiah who delivers men from their sins and give men forgiveness of their sin, who gives men remission of sin, who gives men, who gives men the ability to have their sins blotted out from dead works to serve the living God. We sound the alarm of him that makes the way for everyone to come into the Father. And that Savior is Jesus. That Savior is not Buddha. The Savior is not Krishna. The Savior is not Baha. The Savior is not Muhammad. The Savior is not Allah, but Yahweh, the one true God who begets and is begotten, who gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish. There are many people perishing in the cultures of religion, but those who are in Christ may go through tribulation and persecution and the hatred of men, but they are saved because they believe and they turned away from their sins. Friends, instruct them. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, the gift of God. Friends, the gift of God is not your religion, it's not your identity in religion, it is not your custom, but the gift of God is eternal life. Hence, the reason God gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever of us Whosoever is me, whosoever is you, woman, whosoever is you, my friend, the man, the woman, then whosoever will receive the gift of eternal life, and whosoever will turn away from the sins and pursue Jesus will have their names written in the book of life. Hallelujah. Is your name written in the book of life? Because the only way men can have their names written in the book of life is that they will repent from their sins and follow Jesus. Pick up the cross and follow Jesus. Pick up the cross and follow Jesus. Pick up the cross and follow Jesus. Are you following Jesus or you're following religion? 
we made our territory bound by religion. We have buildings, church buildings and synagogues and mosques and the crime rate in our society has been changed because men are falling prey into the bondage of religion. But here comes Jesus, the Lamb of God that taken away the sins of the world. The Lamb of God that taken away bondages from humanity. The Lamb of God that gives permission of sin. His name is Yeshua. No Buddha, no Krishna, no Mohammed, but Jesus. He is coming, not with the jingle bells of Santa Claus, not the ho 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 sound of Santa Claus, but he's coming with the blast of the trumpet and as a sound, the alarm people of Stratton. When this trumpet blows, would you be among those who will be raised from the grave and translated to meet the Lord in the air? Would you be among those who are alive in their body in Christ that will be translated to be with the King of Kings? Behold, the Lord Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for in my father's house. There are many mansions. There are many mansions. They asked Mohammed, where is he going? When he dies, he didn't give them an answer. But here comes Jesus in the Gospel of John, saying, I go to prepare a place. For in my father's house, there are many mansions. It is not a tax mansion. It is not a religious mansion. It is not a, a, a Rastafarian mansion. It is not a Hindu mansion, it's not an Islamic mansion. It is the house of God in my father's house. There are many mansions. It says I go to prepare a place that where I am. And the people who were preparing a place for were his disciples. Those who have picked up the cross and they're following him. Those who desire to be with him and have died to their sins. They have died to themselves. They have yielded to the cross. They have yielded to the Christ. Those are the ones who speak the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can back to the Father except by me. Therefore, no one can come to Yahweh except through Jesus. Men don't come to Yahweh except through Jesus. It's through Jesus because he says, I am the way. So the only way to Yahweh, the only way to Yahweh is through Jesus Christ. The only way man can get to Allah is through Muhammad. Through Jesus who end up being in Yahweh's hands. The one who begets and is begotten. The one true God in whom is life and the life was the light of man. Today friends we're here to share the love of God. The love of God that was demonstrated. That all sinners will see his nakedness. His, he being stripped, he being proved, he being rejected for the penalty of our sins. The love of God was demonstrated by paying the sins of humanity. Friends, we are all condemned. None of us is holy. God will be an unjust God. If you will let men not pay for their sins. God is just and God is holy and God is righteous. Therefore, he has to acquit the innocent. God is just and God is holy. Therefore, he has to condemn the wicked. God is just and God is holy. Therefore, he must not by any means clear the guilty. But the question is, how can a good God, a just God, a holy God, how can a holy God justify an ungodly man? This is the mystery of the gospel. That by this mystery and by the revelation of the mystery of the gospel, when men hear this good news, when men hear about the love of God, they will see a possibility of a sinner who is condemned already to hell, can be saved from going to hell, or lap dancing with the devil on national feet, burning and rolling in a lake of fire, crying for a drop of water, and there will be no intervention. That way of bringing you out of your pain, that way of bringing you out of your stress, that way of bringing you out of your debt of your sin, that way of bringing you back to God, reconciled back to Him, that way is through Jesus. That way is a way of forgiveness, it's a way of reconciliation, it is a way of redemption, it is a way of life, it is a way of illumination into the knowledge of God and the truth of God. That way is a way to be seated with Him in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. That is that way. And friend, Jesus is that way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And Buddha is not that way. Krishna is not that way. Muhammad is not that way. If man will come to receive forgiveness of their sin, you will have to discover the way, the truth, and the life. To experience peace with God. To experience the 
the love of God, to experience dominion and redemption. And today we serve the alarm. For Jesus is not dead, but he's alive. He is not dead, still in the grave, but he's alive. That is why he call, we call him Lord. That is why we call him God. And many here in Stratum, who are Muslim, believe that Jesus never said in the word that he is God, but he did say he is God. The question is, the interpretation for the word God is I am. And Jesus said before Abraham was I am. He met my days. The reason why the Jewish people killed Jesus is because he said he was God and he was equal to God. The purpose historically proven is that he proved himself to be God, manifested in the flesh. For the Jewish people saw the Messiah, saw the promised king that was prophesied by Moses, prophesied by Musa, Musa to come and save his people from the hands of the Gentiles. There come Jesus the deliverer. There come Jesus not coming alone to save his people, but to save humanity. For God had promised Abraham that in you shall the nations and the families of the earth be blessed. It's a true your seed, they will possess the gates of the enemies. Friends in Stratum, today we are here to remind you of the promised seed that was made manifest 2,000 years ago. We are here to present to you the promised seed in which we can obtain salvation, forgiveness of sin, remission of sins, and the blotting out of our conscience. Yeah, friend, we're here to declare to you the promised seed that is not a religion, but it's a person. And that is why the Bible says, as many as receive the promised seed, Jesus Christ, he gave them power to become sons of God. Friends, in strength of God doesn't give men, women, and children power to become religious, i.e., he gives them power to be Muslim or he gives them power to be Hindus but he gives us the power to be sons of God because our religion will end in the grave is fit for giving you a religious burial but it's not fit to give you a secret God dying and whining and reigning with him your religion will only give you power and pride on the earth as being a man that is holy and righteous through your efforts and benevolence but when one comes in contact with Jesus he encounters the grace of God the grace of God that will enable you to run the race of life. The bread of life that satisfies the hunger of life. He gives you the living waters that satisfy the death of life. He gives you the light that shines in the darkness and brother and sister. The Bible says in him was life and the light was the light of men. It's the light of men and this light when it shines in darkness. When it shines in the cottage of evil or in the cottage of wickedness, wickedness cannot comprehend the knowledge, the theologies, the opinions of men cannot comprehend because the light shines in darkness and the Bible declares darkness cannot comprehend, darkness cannot understand, sciences cannot understand, sociologies cannot understand, the science and opinion and the interpretation of men cannot understand because there is a superior knowledge that comes through Jesus that comes through the manifestation of the unseen God who dwells in inoperable light and surrounded by cherubim, this becomes the light. The Bible says, the word that was in the beginning, the Lord Jesus that was with God and is God, by whom was with in the beginning with God, that created the heavens and the earth. And friends, I want to remind you that Jesus is not just a prophet, but a creator of the heavens and the earth. The Bible says, he was in the beginning with God and all things, all things, all things made in the heaven and the sea on the earth below was made by him and in him was life and the life was the light of man and many of us are walking in darkness but today is the day of salvation and light has come to strengthen that the light will shine in the quarters of the of, of religions in the quarters of the mosques in the quarters of the vatican in the quarters of the churches that light will shine to lead men into the light it takes light to enter light but the Bible says this is the condemnation. This is the condemnation in our time. This is the condemnation in our nation. This is the condemnation in our generation. That men, women, and children love darkness rather than light. That even though Jesus is the light, men will reject Jesus the light and go for Satan the darkness. And that is why the Bible says by this light, he has delivered us from the powers of darkness and brought us unto the kingdom of God's dear son, whose name is Jesus. And therefore, today.
Okay, friends, it's your time. Repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Except we repent, we'll likewise perish. Except we be converted, we'll likewise perish. Except we be baptized, we'll likewise perish. Except we turn and pick up our crosses, we'll likewise perish. Many have put pride in the crimes they commit. They make gangster runs, glorifying gun banking, glorifying killings. They glorify them, these things and make money. But friends, what will it profit a gun banker? What will it profit an arm robber? Well, it profit a drunk killer if he gets all the money and escape in the hands of the law, in the hands of policemen? What will it profit a man if he gets all these things that status as a bad boy, a bad man, and yet he loses his soul? Men, friends, and certain men are going to hell in a handbasket. But Jesus has come to call you out of condemnation. And that is why we do not preach a condemning message, but we preach a message salvation because you're already on your way to hell the bible declares that those who do not believe are already condemned already doomed for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god all have sinned the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life and this message of the gospel is the gift of god that gives men who are dead in their bodies eternal life it's here to pull you out of your mess and turn your message, your mess into a message. Today, friends, in Shretham, we sound the alarm. Jesus is coming. He will not come as a baby in a manger. So you can celebrate Christmas and you will not come as a, as a, as, as one that will be nailed to the cross. So you can celebrate Easter. On his coming, friends, he will come as a king and a judge. And the Bible declares in the book of Acts 10, 17 verse 30, that God, in the days of our ignorance, in the days of our wickedness, in the days of our deliberate lifestyle of sinning, God has prayed for today as the message is being preached that there's salvation to the sinner. As the message is being preached that there is reconciliation with God for the sinner. As the message is being preached that redemption is being granted to sinners. If there were repent, the Bible said, therefore men everywhere must repent. Repent! Why? Because God has appointed a day where he will judge humanity. He will judge humanity not after the laws of this government. They will not judge humanity after the laws of the Crown Court, or the Magistrate Court, or the World Court. But God will judge all man after his own righteousness. And friends, God is not biased. God is a God of justice. God is not a racist. God is a God of justice. The Bible says he has no respect for men. But in any nation where he is feared, in any nation where he is revered, in any nation where men respect him and turn away from sin, he stands by them and covers them and protects them. Are you going to be among those that will reject this God? And on that day, we'll be judged and cast into the lake of fire. But today, as we preach this message, just as Jesus was not sent into the world to condemn the world, but that through Jesus, the world will be saved. And today, in this generation and in this season, so has God sent us. It is the day of salvation. It is a day of salvation and not a day of condemnation. Your sins can be blotted out because there are men, women, and children who cannot sleep because of the sins they've committed, the wickedness they have done. Many of us cannot sleep because we are having to bear the consequences of the sins of our fathers. Curses are upon us, but thanks be to God that there is the lump of God that taken away the sins of the world. The lump of God that breaks the curse of the law. The lump of God that gives redemption to humanity. The lump of God that brings blessings. Friends, blessing is not found in riches, in gold, in silver. But the blessing of the Lord is the blessing of forgiveness. The Bible says, blessed is a man whose sins are forgiven. It is not a blessed man that has a religion or a religious identity. You see, we don't find the true blessings of God, the eternal blessings of God in receiving a religion. We find the blessing of God in Jesus. We find his blessings in him. Because in him there is redemption, in him there is forgiveness, in him there is peace. And in him, hallelujah, there is salvation in him. There is joy in him. There is eternal life in him. There is communion with God. It will be nice that we're living in the land.
last days. These are the signs, my friend. Repent, shut up, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is really at hand. Repent because the trumpet is blown. It is the sound of repentance. Don't live in your sins that you will end up dying in your sins. Come to Jesus. Come to the Lord and be saved. Friends, in short term, eternity is long and life is short. Have you taken account where you will spend eternity? Do you know where you're going when you die? Do you even know if you sleep tonight, you will wake up? And do you know if you don't wake up, where you will spend eternity? Friends, life is short and eternity is long. Many have made investment for their cars. They have home insurances. They have life insurances. Maybe have burial insurances. Some have car insurances. Some have life insurances, but many do not have eternal life insurance for their souls. Today we value our phones more than our souls. When we don't have our phones with us, it's as if we no longer have breath in us. But friends, many of you, your souls are perishing. Your souls are bleeding. They're crying out for help, and the help you're giving them is money. The help you're giving, the, the perishing of your soul is gold. The help you're giving, the perishing of your soul is sex. The help you're giving, the perishing of your soul is alcohol. The help you're giving, the perishing of your soul is pornography. The help you're giving, the perishing of your soul is religion. It's Islam, it's Hinduism, it's Catholicism. The help you're giving to your soul is the things of this world. The things of this world cannot save you from your sins, remit sins, your religion cannot do all these things and undo the damages and the effects that you have created through your disobedience and rebellion against God. Friends, in strength, many of us have been exposed to God's divine judgment, defile the laws of God and continuously, effortlessly, because of the nature of sin, we continuously rebel against God. We do not want to even sin no more. We're seeking a savior that will change our life, but we want him to do it for us. We're not willing to work with him. But today, in the name of Jesus, it is a day of salvation. Today, if you call on the name of the Lord in repentance, call in the name of the Lord seeking forgiveness, call in the name of the Lord seeking remission for your sins. If you're seeking him to blot out the wickedness that is in your mind and, and the configuration of sin in you, that he will come to you and change your life and make you a child of the living God. The Bible says, as many as receive him, he gave them power to become sons of God and people of strength. God has to give you power to become a religious man or a Muslim or a Hindu or a Buddhist or a new age or a witch or a sorcerer. He gives you power to become sons of God because in heaven, they are the sons of God. And in hell or in the lake of fire, they are sons of the devil. And many of you are sons of the devil. You are brood of vipers taking boast in your religion, taking boast in your Catholicism. You are brood of vipers and snakes and wicked men. But you are, you are snakes in sheep clothing, in the clothing of religion, in the clothing of Hinduism and Darwinism, in the clothing of Islam. You are snakes, wicked men. So you follow the ways of your father, the devil. But this is hope that today, if you will call in the name of the Lord, you adopt you into the beloved because the blood has been shed. The blood has been shed since the foundation of the world for the remission of sins, for the forgiveness of sins, for the reconciliation of men to God and God to men. The blood has been shed and appropriated before our very eyes on the foundation of the earth. And so, therefore, all of us can be saved. We can be saved if we will call on His name. Friends, in Shechem, there is no name of the heaven where a man can be saved except the name of Jesus. Not in the name of Buddha, Krishna, or Muhammad, but the name of the Yeshua, Hamashiach, who will find salvation. The Bible says, in the name of the Lord, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Oh, there is no name under heaven where a man must be saved except the name of Jesus. Your Buddha won't save you. Your Krishna won't save you. Your Muhammad will save you when it comes to the issue of sin. 
your eye will save you when it comes to the issue of sin. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, and that eternal life is found through Jesus, not Buddha, not Krishna, no Brahma, no Muhammad, but Jesus. Do you know him? Do you know him? Because those that know the Lord, the Bible declares, will be strong and do exploits. They will be strong and do exploits in the last days, because they know him. And in the last day, Jesus will know them. For many will call him Lord, Lord, Prophet. Lord, 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 Teacher. Lord, 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 Messiah. Or Lord, 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 Messenger. And you will say, I never knew you. You wake up of iniquity. These were men that cast out devils. These were men that preached the truth. These were men that prophesied. These were men that were teaching the ways of God. And on that day, because they were hypocrites, walking in in their iniquity and hiding it with a garment of religion, Jesus will expose them and say, I never knew you. You see, religion is not the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the way. And that is why today we're not here to give you a religion. We're here to give you Jesus, the way, the truth and the life. The one who was and is to come. The Alpha and the Omega. The one that has in his hand the keys of David. The one that has in his hand the keys of hell and death. And because he had this key, though he was crucified, though he was killed, though he was buried, he rose from the grave. His name is Yeshua HaMashiach. And he's coming again. Straight up Jesus is coming. He's coming with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And when this trumpet sounds, the king will come. Hallelujah. The king will come when the trumpet blows. When this trumpet blows, would you know him? trumpet will be sounded 
And the Bible says on that day that the men who are in Christ will be translated from one corner of the earth to the other corner. From the four wings of the earth, men will be translated. They will be lifted up. The Bible says that all men will go to meet the Lord and go to be with him forever. Friends, when the trumpet blows, are you going to be among the number? Many of you sing the hymns, oh, when the saints go marching in. But when the saints will hear the sound of the trumpet, they will fly to meet the Lord in the air. Oh, are you going to be among the number? Hallelujah. Glory. Oh. Will you be among the number? For oh, Jesus is coming. Buddha and coming, friends. Krishna and coming, friends. Mohammed and coming because they're all in the grave. They celebrate their burial in Mecca by Jesus. His tomb is empty. There's no need for men to surround his grave because he's in heaven. The Bible says that true worship him shall worship him in spirit and in truth for God seeketh such to worship him. And friends, today you can tell me to shut up. But very soon you'll be mourning. So therefore repent, my dear friend. For life is short and eternity is long. Your shadow cannot remit your sins. Your shadow cannot render forgiveness of sin. On that day, your account of the shadow to the preaching of the gospel will not give you favor before God or reconcile him to you. Your day, that day, your shadow will give you a seat. Love dancing with the devil with national teeth. Burning and rolling in the lake of fire. Crying for a drop of water. Hey, have you known if I didn't say shut up and I say Lord forgive me. Lord have mercy upon me. Friends, the day is a day of salvation. And Jesus is coming. And that is coming for those who will not receive this message. Friends, many will not go to hell. Because they were living in their sins alone. But many will go to hell. Because they rejected the preaching of the gospel. They rejected the truth of the Yeshua HaMashiach. They took pride in their Rastafarianism. They took pride in their black people, Israelism. They took pride in their atheism, in their Darwinism, in their evolutionism, in their Mormonism, in their Jehovah Witness. They took pride in their Islam. They took pride in their Hinduism. They took pride in their Buddhism. They took pride in their Shintoism. But today, in the name of Jesus, how about you take pride in Christ? Friends, many are taking pride in their sexual identity. Many are taking pride. Women are taking pride in being men and men are taking pride for being women. Men are taking pride for waving LGBT flags and endorsing homosexuality and legitimacy. But that which God calls an abomination is an abomination. Sin is sin. Heaven is at hand. And except we repent, will likewise perish. Except we call upon the name of the Lord, will likewise perish. And today in the name of Jesus, I come not condemning the homosexual, the bisexual, or the one that commits abortion, the one that kills, the one that sells drugs. I'm there telling you that you're on your way to hell, but Jesus is providing a way and life and the truth to deliver you, to redeem you, to save you, to give you a seat with him so you can dine and wine with him and reign with him forever. Friends, do you know what it takes to be in Christ? The Bible says those in Christ are seated with him in heavenly places. There is a heavenly seat prepared for you. But because men love darkness, they will rather choose their lap dancing with the devil with national teeth, painting and rolling in the lake of fire at the expense of the heavenly seat and the heavenly mansion that Jesus has prepared for them. They will rather get drunk with alcohol, get high with marijuana, get high on heroin, than to receive the wine of the Spirit. Friends, today is the day of salvation. And I'm, I'm not here to lie to you. You can hear all the lies from the BBC news. You can hear the lies on the Fox news. We've been lying enough and here comes the truth. And today we're here to preach the truth of Jesus. The King of glory. The one who died for you and I. Your government did not die for you. Your religious fathers will not die for you. But the Bible says greater love has no man. Than to lay down his life for his friends. I'm here to let you know that Jesus laid down his life for you. The Bible says, yet whilst we were without strength, Christ died. Yet whilst we were men ungodly, wicked, living in a rebellious lifestyle, practicing homosexuality. Yet whilst we are killing babies and desiring the safety of animals. We put, more, we put more emphasis on the safety of animals than babies that are in the womb. 
This is the man that we have become. Today the Lord is calling all men everywhere in church. Repent! Repent! For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Except we repent, we'll likewise perish. And friends, as I come to the end of my message, people of church, I'm here to let you know there is the A, B, C, D to receiving eternal life. Not a religion. There is no eternity rewards, eternal rewards in religion or receiving a religious membership, a religious identity. There is only an eternal reward when a man comes in Christ. It is in Christ we are able to go through the crisis of the last days. It's in Jesus, not only as prophet but as savior. And Anabi Isa was not just a prophet alone but a savior. He's a saving prophet. He's a resurrected prophet. He's a redeeming prophet. He's a forgiving prophet. Oh, he's a reconciling prophet. The one that reconciled the heart of the fathers to the son and the heart of the son to the fathers. Today, people of Strata, it is a day of salvation and except for repent, will will likewise perish. Today, we're here to provide the solution and the, the solution to the problem of our generation, of our nation, of our communities. And the answer to the problem of our life is Jesus. Jesus, the solution. Jesus, the answer. Jesus, the redeemer. Jesus, the peacemaker. The one who is and is to come. Friends, are you ready for his coming? Are you ready to receive him? You see, policemen, life is short and eternity is long. Community police, bulletproof, cannot give you eternal life. Remember that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The laws of the land cannot remit sins. The laws of the land cannot forgive sins. The law of the land will send you to prison. But the laws of God will send you to hell. Which one will you safeguard yourself from? Today, in the name of Jesus, we're here to call all men everywhere to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is at hand. It's at hand. It is coming. It is near. It is close. It is too close. Who can know it? If you knew, you would give your life to the Lord right now. Friends, now is the day of salvation. Now is the day of repentance. Except we repent, we will not was perish. We sound the alarm. There is the ABCD to receive in eternal life. Friends, today is the day. Call on his name. He said, Whosoever will call on the name of Jesus, not the name of Buddha, not the name of Krishna, not the name of Muhammad, not the name of Mary, not the name of Allah, but the name of Jesus. Whosoever will call on that one holy name and holy name and holy name will be saved. Is there anybody that is looking for eternal life? Call on the name of Jesus. Is there anybody that is looking for a religion? Call on the name of Allah. Call on the name of Buddha, Krishna, and Baha. They will give you a religion. They will give you a religious attention. They will give you a religious membership, a religious protection, a book, a garment. But when a man calls on the name of Jesus, he will receive the righteousness of God. He will receive, he will receive access to the kingdom, sight to the kingdom, seat with the king, rule with Today, is there anybody that is looking for eternal life that their name will be written in the book of life? Is there anybody that is looking for eternal life that will partake in the eating of the tree of life? Is there anybody here in Stratum that wants to drink of the waters of life? They need to come to Jesus. He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life of men. All of us right here have a created life, but none of us have a long created life. And Jesus said, the thief coming to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come. The essence, the purpose, the reason for Jesus coming to humanity. The essence, the purpose, the reason why God became a man. God who is not a man, but is a spirit, but became a man. That the sons of men who see the Son of God coming to forgive sins and lead men to the way, the truth, and the life. That the sons of men will become sons of God and have the uncreated light of God in them and have their names written in the book of life and be candidate of eating of the tree of life. Friends, today is a day of salvation. We call all men everywhere, run to Jesus. Stop following religion, stop following cost of a religion, laws of religion, for all these things that just give you pride and ego, it will not give you life. That is why in the Garden of Eden, there was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and there was a tree of life. Not all things that are good are life. Not all things that are life are good, but there's something you can receive, and that is why God didn't come to make us good men, but He came to make us God men.
because many people sin where God may. See, God did not send you to the world to make you a good man. And that is why you look for religion to make you a good man, a good man, or a good woman, or a good child. But the life that God gives you is to make you a God man. A good man is one that has eternal life. A good man is one that has a religion, he has a religious membership, a religious identity. He observes customs and tradition, takes pride in his effort and benevolence. A good man. And that is why many good men are in hell. That is why they'll come to Jesus and say, Jesus, was I not a good man? And Jesus said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Be good. He doesn't send you to heaven. Be good. will give you a visitation from Santa Claus. For Santa Claus is looking for a list of good men and good women to give them a Christmas gift. Guess what? Your goodness will give you a Christmas gift that lasts for a year. But you receiving it, we receive it, or you being a God man, a man that has repented from the sins and believed in Jesus, you'll receive eternal life that will make you a God man. The Bible says, therefore, as many as receive Jesus, he gave them power to become sons of God who are God men. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, as many as are led by the Spirit, are the sons of God. Are God men and God women. Friends, instructor, today it is a day of salvation, eternity. It's long and life is short. What are you doing? What are you doing to spend eternity in peace, in joy, and in peace? What are you doing? And friends, I will give you the ABC to spend eternity in peace, to spend eternity with God, to receive eternal peace, eternal healing, eternal deliverance, found in Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Messiah, the Creator. Friends, today is our day. Friends, there is the A, the B, the C, and the D to receive an eternal life. There is a D, there is a C, there is a B, there is a A to receive an eternal life. Today we're here to give you that life. Found in Jesus, for in him was life, and the life was a light of man. Friends will receive life when we have Jesus in our life. We'll receive life when we have Jesus in our life, because in him was life. Life and the life was a light of men, but men are looking for life, so they join the secret society and be part of the Freemasons, so they'll become the illuminated one. Men have become Buddhist, so they'll become the enlightened ones. But friends, if a man will receive Jesus, he will receive life. If a man will receive Jesus, he will receive life. If a man will receive Jesus, he will know the truth, and the truth will set him free. Today is a day of salvation, people of Scripture. Repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'm about to sound the alarm for you to hear the ways and how to receive this life. As I sound the alarm, hear the word of the Lord, hear what the Spirit is saying in this place in Scripture. Islam, become a Muslim, become a Hindu, become a, a Buddhist, become any of these religious sects, become a Catholic. But if you're looking for eternal life, so that when the trumpet blows, you'll be raised from the grave among those who are sanctified, and receive an inheritance among those that are sanctified, then hear me out. The A is that you will repent and admit you a sinner. Friends, for all have sinned 
and are falling short of the glory of God. All of us are falling short. And friends, don't take only the homosexual pain in fire. All men have sinned. The Bible says there's six things that God do and hate. And seven is an abomination. A proud look is an abomination. Just ask homosexuality and explanation is an abomination. And one that shed innocent blood and on this feet, men are killing one another is an abomination. Black on black crime is an abomination. White on black crime is an abomination. A proud look, a racist look is an abomination. They're all an abomination and all punishable by death. Repent and admit you a sinner. Admit that Jesus Christ is Lord and not Buddha, not Krishna, not Baha, not Muhammad, not Allah, but Jesus is Lord. We cry out for eternal life because sin is in us and the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. You must admit you a sinner. For all our sin and falling short of the glory of God. We're all falling short because there is sin in man. There is sin in man. There is sin in man. There is sin in man that hinders man from seeking God. There is sin in man that makes man love alcohol more than God, love sex more than God, love porn more than God, love their homosexuality more than God, love their tag life more than God, love heroin more than God. There is sin in man. And therefore you must admit you are a sinner and repent and admit that Jesus Christ is Lord. Why only Jesus? Because he's the one that forgives sin. He's the one that remits sins. He's the one that blows our transgressions. He is the one and only, the only one and the holy one. The lamp of God that taken away the sin of the world. The only thing that can deal with the sin of the world is Jesus. No Buddha, no Krishna, no Baha, no Muhammad, no Allah, but Jesus. Hallelujah. He is the one that deals with the issue of sin. Hallelujah. The B is that you believe in him. You repent and believe. The Bible says, Therefore, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever, whosoever, my friend, is you. Whosoever is the Muslim, the Hindu, the Shinto, is me, myself. Whosoever is me, whosoever believes in him will not perish. There is a condition, there is a promise, there is a warning. That whosoever will believe and whosoever will not believe will perish, but whosoever will believe will live and receive eternal life and have their names written in the book of life and be partakers and receive an inheritance of life among those that are sanctified. The sin is that you confess your sins, not to Buddha, not to Christian, not to Baha, not to Muhammad, not the Pope, not Mary. Because Mary, all of them have died in the grave and have men falling short of the glory of God and have no power to reconcile men back to God and God back to men. They have no power to block our transgressions, recreate the hearts of men. We have Jesus that doesn't change the coat on the man but change the heart of the man that is in the coat. And today you have to confess your sins to him. The Bible says in 1 John 1 9, it says this clearly. It says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and who is faithful jesus who is faithful who is just jesus he is the one that is just and faithful he is the one that forgives sins he is the one that is faithful and just and it's not by your plan called judges jesus no buddha no krishna no baha no muhammad but jesus the one who is just and faithful like you confess your sins you forgive you if I went to court as a black man and I confess my crime, my court being a racist, the judge being a racist will send me to prison. But we have a God in heaven. When you confess your sin, he's not a racist, he's not biased, he doesn't discriminate. He respects all those that will confess their sins to Jesus. And they will receive forgiveness of sin. For the Bible declares that blessed is a man whose sins are forgiven. The blessing is not tied to gold, the riches and cars, and the things of this world, the hearts of Facebook. But it's tied to the level of forgiveness that is rendered to a man or a woman or a child. They are blessed. They are blessed with the blessings of the Lord. They are blessed with eternal life, not their religion. Friends, confess your sins to Jesus and you shall be saved. Don't confess your sins to Mary. Say Hail Mary, say Lord's Prayer and sing you by repetition. Being public, sins are forgiven. Sins are forgiven when men take an act of turning away from their sins and pursuing Jesus and picking up the cross and following him daily. Turn away from your pornography. Turn away from your whore monger. Turn away
away from the gangster life. Turn away from your homosexuality and then your lesbianism. Turn away from your transgenderism. Turn away from the killing of babies. Repent! Confess your sins to Jesus. The deed as I come to the end. The deed, the Bible they say, Jesus said, if any man, if any woman, if any child would desire to come after me, if any man was written and Nabi Isa in the Quran, if they would turn away from the sin and pick up the cross and follow him, he said, I will give them rest. Rest is not found on the Sabbath day. Jesus said, I am the Lord of the rest. We find true rest not in the day, but we find true rest in him. That is why in the last days when God comes and he's taking the nation, he said, come into my rest. Thou good and faithful servants. The faithful servants of the Lord will find rest in God. He is the author of rest, the founder of rest, the maker of rest, the giver of rest. He's the one that gives rest. Not in the Sabbath day, if you're a Jew or you're a seven day Adventist, you place your faith, your salvation in a day you are doomed at the expense of a fellowship and communion with the Messiah Jesus. You are doomed. Repent. Repent and come to Jesus. He said, if any man should come up to me, let him pick up his cross and follow me. And friends, in Shatam, I was never that good guy. I was that guy that was evil, that bad, that was wicked. I used to say, God knows my heart, but my heart was desperately wicked. Who can know it? It was deceitful above all things. It was deceitful more than the devil. It was wicked. The Bible says that many of us who claim, God knows my heart. God, you judge. God, only God can judge me and all that nonsense. But the Bible declares in the book of Jeremiah, the heart of a man is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Who can know it? I cannot know it. Even if you confess to me that you are a good guy and God knows your heart. Well, God knows it. He's revealed it in the scriptures. He said your heart is deceitful above all things. Your heart is wicked, desperately wicked. That means it strives, it lives on wickedness, it is wickedness, it drinks wickedness. And therefore the Bible declares in the book of Psalms that God is angry with the sinner every day. Because the sinner eats and drinks sin in order to live. That is why many who want to go to Hollywood have to spread their legs. Women are spreading their legs. Men are becoming women and women are becoming men. So they can enter the Hollywood startup. Some are spreading their legs and making their, their dead leg long so they become pop stars. Men are looking for guns and knives so they can become gangsters. Friends, it is time to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And today, if you pick up your cross and you follow him, you are guaranteed eternal life, abundant of life. Have your name written in the book of life. Repent! Repent! Repent, Satan, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And except we repent, we life was perish. We sound this alarm, for Jesus is coming. I was a guy, I wore the cross, I never followed Jesus. I prayed, Hail Mary. The Lord's prayer, but I never followed Jesus. My prayers were just very public. Until the day I decided to follow him, I sang that song indeed. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Hey, no turning back. The world behind me, Jesus before me. The world behind me, Jesus before me. The world behind me, Jesus before me. No turning back. Hey, when I sang that hymn and that song, and it began to resonate with my spirit, soul, and body, I began to receive the power of God and encounter with Christ. It changed my life. It changed my decision. The way I felt, my emotion got reconfigured. My mindset got reconfigured. My decision got changed. I decided to follow him. I picked up the cross and I followed him. And you picking up the cross or you're wearing the cross like a pope. You're wearing the cross like an archbishop of Canterbury. Are you picking up your cross and 